And thank God that we have another state senator that's got his act together in his heart and his mind in the right place. Another one of my heroes, Senator Tom Davis. Morning. Y'all are going to be told, because I've been told the last few days when I announced that I had been invited to speak here, and I accepted with gratitude, and I got calls from Republican friends of mine saying, what are you doing at a nullification rally? That, that isn't smart. That's not, that's not based in the Constitution. That's not based in what our country stands for. And I just had to say to them, what did you learn in school? Who taught you in school? Have you read the Constitution? Because guess what, guys? Lee Bryce is absolutely right. If I have to choose between Thomas Jefferson and James Madison, or Alina Kagan and Justice Sotomayor, I'm going to go with Madison and Jefferson every time. And the reason for that, there was a law passed back in 1800, back when this gentleman right beside me was president, that said that if you criticized a federal official, you could be placed in jail, the Alien and Sedition Despite the First Amendment, if you spoke against your elected representative, you could put in jail. Thomas Jefferson wrote for Kentucky a resolution nullifying that particular law, and it was never enforced in Kentucky. James Madison wrote a resolution for Virginia nullifying that Congressional Act, and it was never enforced in Virginia. We have a proud tradition of states pushing back against federal usurpation. And why is that? Well, it's been talked about today. It is a matter of agency and principle. When a principal delegates powers to an agent, that agent can only act on its behalf within the parameters that have been defined. The 13 states that ratified this United States Constitution and every state that came in afterwards came in under the premise and with the assumption and the stipulation that they were sovereign, that they were the principles, and that they were delegated to the federal government specific, enumerated, limited powers. And that's the only realm within which they could act. With the knowledge and the expectation and the logical inference that if they acted beyond that power, that if they did things beyond which they were told they had the authority to act on their behalf, that they could be brought to heel. Right. Nullification is a process, is a mechanism, as Representative Trumley said, of bringing an out of control federal government to heel. Yeah. What sort of government do we have if not based on the Constitutional Republic handed to us by the Founders. What sort of government do we have if it is not predicated upon the notion of sovereign states coming together in a compact and saying that for limited purposes, in specific ways, we want to act collectively. But independent of that, we do not want that principal power to be given away to that agent. And in South Carolina, we have a great man who's been maligned for t far too long in our nation's history, who articulated this principle and is recognized for his metaphysical genius, and that's John C. Calhoun. And I am a proud South Carolinian, I'm proud of our history, and I'm proud of John C. Calhoun. I am proud of that U.S. Senator. I am proud of that Vice President. I am proud of that Secretary of War and Secretary of State. I am proud of the man that stood up for state sovereignty at a time when Northern Terrace was trying to crush the South. He went ahead and stood up for South Carolina then. We're going to stand up for you now with your help. Yeah. Let me say this. I respect, and I, and I, Chad Conley is a wonderful GOP chairman. He's got a wonderful staff and he's provided a wonderful support. But there is intelligentsia throughout South Carolina that call themselves Republicans and call themselves Republican leaders that are saying, this is not a fight worth having because you can't win. This is a fight worth having because the Supreme Court has already spoken. This is a fight worth having because what you're arguing is not supported by the U.S. Constitution. Don't be fooled. Those individuals do not know what they're talking about. You have the intellectual high ground here. You have the intellectual high ground here. Your argument is based upon what the Founding Fathers and their genius put together. 
Their argument is based upon what keeps them in power. Their argument is based upon what can they do in order to make themselves look good. What can they do in order to ingratiate themselves with who they think the movers and shakers are. That's not the truth. That's sophistry. That's sophistry. You guys know the truth. Because guess what? The U.S. Supreme Court can make decisions like it did in Plessy v. Ferguson, separate versus equal, but then in Brown Board v. Board of Education, they can reverse that and say, no, that's not the case. We can't go into this with the notion that we can't win, that the die is cast, that things can't change, that people's will can't change direction. That's defeatist. I'm not defeatist, and you're not defeatist. We all have our jobs to play here. We all have our roles. My friend Nick Mulvaney is up in Washington, D.C., fighting his heart out up in Washington, D.C. He's doing what he can. I can't do anything right now up in Congress. I can't stop the federal encroachment from being passed in the House and the Senate and signed into law by President Obama. But what I can do as a state senator, and what I promise you that I will do as a state senator, is make sure that every power the state of South Carolina has as a sovereign state will be exercised and utilized to push back against that federal encroachment. Because that is what our founders expect from us. And if we don't do that, if we don't do that, we breach our oath. If we don't do that, we have broken a vow to God that we are going to enforce the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of South Carolina. If we don't push back in every single way we can, we don't deserve to be in those chambers, and you deserve to throw us out. My object over the next four years, and every day I walk into that Senate chamber, is to find another way that I can thwart federal encroachment, another way that I can stop the federal government from overstepping the bounds that we, the states, have given them within the act. Every day I'm going to step in there and try to make South Carolina the freest state in the nation. This state, this state has a proud tradition of leaders stepping up and holding aloft the candle of liberty at a time when things were darkest, we have to rise to that challenge now. We have right on our side, we have God's will on our side, we have the U.S. Constitution on our side. All we need is the will to get it done, and with your help, we will. Thank you.